Hey guys, and welcome back to the machine learning tutorial with Python. So in today's video, as promised, we're going to be implementing the SVM algorithm. So we're actually going to be using something called SVC, which is support vector classification, uh, but it's kind of a part of support vector machines, obviously. Uh, and it's exactly what we talked about in the last video. So before I go too far, I just quickly want to give a summary of what the rest of the tutorial series is going to look like for everyone that is still here. And by the way, if you are still here, uh, thank you. And commend yourself because most people don't watch past like the first or second video so if you guys are still watching and still going along with the tutorial series that means you guys are actually here to learn and you're getting a lot of value out of it so that's awesome for you guys uh anyways what we're going to be doing in the next videos is i'm going to be talking about the k-means clustering algorithm uh which is an unsupervised learning algorithm that you guys will see and you'll talk about the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning which so far we've only been doing supervised learning uh, then I'm going to take a break for probably like five days, five to seven days, um, work on some more deep learning stuff because I don't have too many projects done in that right now, and then come back to you guys with uh, some neural network tutorials and some project videos and really get right into that. But I do want to take a break and kind of start that as, as its own new series uh, just to maybe get some more people watching it because a lot of people don't watch like, you know, the 15th video in a uh, Python machine learning tutorial. So I hope that's fine with you guys. Um, but anyway, Anyways, let's get into implementing this algorithm. So essentially before I start, I have actually just imported two new things here. So I've imported metrics from sklearn and I've just imported the k -near, nearest neighbors classifier, which we had in previous videos, just because I want to compare our results using an SVM to uh, the k nearest neighbors classifier and see if one's better than the other, why that would be and kind of talk about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now actually is really easy, right, to implement our uh, Classifier, we're just going to do CLF equals SVM dot SVC. Now, this stands for support vector classification. At least that's what I'm pretty sure it stands for. That would make sense. Uh, and this takes a ton of different parameters. Now, we can leave it like this, and that's what we're going to do right now, um, and just see exactly how it performs without tweaking anything, without giving a kernel, without giving a soft margin or a hard margin, uh, and see what we get. So let's do that. So uh, to fit this, obviously, we're going to do CLF dot fit. And we'll just give it our x underscore train, uh, y underscore train data. And then we're actually going to have to uh, predict some data before we can score this. So to predict this, we're just going to do, uh, let's say, y underscore prediction is standing for CLF dot predict. And then we'll just give it our x underscore test data. And then now we can actually score it using this really cool uh, metrics thing from sklearn. So essentially to get the accuracy, we'll just do metrics dot uh, score accuracy score. Oh, I got to type metrics correctly. That's why accuracy, accuracy score. And then we're going to give it our Y underscore test and our Y underscore prediction. Now, it doesn't even matter what order you put this in, because all this is going to do is just compare the two lists here to see uh, like which are correct and give you kind of the amount of error there. And then if we want to print our accuracy to the screen, obviously, we can just print ACC. Now, notice I just got rid of some of the print statements here just because I don't want that coming out um, and just wasting time when we're trying to run this algorithm. So let's go ahead and run this and see exactly how well we're doing. So 54, okay, that's probably not what you guys were expecting. Now that is because we haven't added any of the parameters and we haven't tweaked anything. So you can imagine that someone that maybe doesn't know how SVM works tries to use this classifier and wow, they get 54 and they're like, SVM is crap, I don't wanna use this, right? Um, but that's because we haven't tweaked the parameters. So essentially this is no better than just guessing at this point. In fact, randomly guessing a number might even do better than this in theory, right? Or in practice. Um, so let's actually use some parameters now for SVC. So one of the parameters this takes is kernel. And this is the first one we're gonna start messing around with. Now I'm just gonna put in here linear as our kernel, okay? And there's a, a huge list of kernels. Actually, I'll bring up the uh, the parameters here so you can actually have a look i'll leave this in the description if you guys want to read through all the different parameters that you can mess with because i'm only going to show like two or three in this video uh, but essentially you can see it has kernel it's a string it's optional uh defaults to rbf you can look that up if you want to know what that is and then it goes there's polynomial sigmoid and linear and these are the four that it allows you to use at least for sk learn uh, and you can create your own kernels if you want although i don't recommend you get into that yet because you're probably not uh, math professors Anyways, we're going to use linear and let's just see what the difference is that we get here. 96. Okay, wow. So that is a massive difference and that's only by tweaking one parameter. So you can see what I was talking about where how bringing our dimensions up one can give us that uh, hyperplane that's going to give a much better classification. 
So that's exactly what I was trying to show in the last video. Now we could mess around and we could throw polynomial in here, but I will show you what happens when I throw polynomial. Now polynomial is like, it's gonna be going to like exponent six, exponent seven, giving some like pretty crazy values that might be more accurate, but watch how long this takes to train. And we might be sitting here for quite a while. In fact, I've tried to train this and waited about like 10, 15 minutes, and then I get too impatient and just close it. Uh, but you can see that this is not as instant as our linear kernel because it's applying a lot more math. And especially, I'm just going to stop running this because we're not going to get to the end of it in this video. Um, essentially, when we're dealing with super small numbers like we have in this cancer data set, applying um, exponents to those is a very uh, large operation. So we could try to do something like degree and change the degree of our polynomial kernel to be two. And maybe, maybe this will make a difference. Let's try this and see if we get anything. Uh, I'll give it like 30 seconds. And if it doesn't run, then we're just going to call it quits. Yeah, so essentially, right, like this is going to take a long time. So maybe if you had enough time, you could wait for this to run, but it's kind of a mystery on how long this is actually going to take us to happen, right? So we'll quit that. Um, and you can see, like, those are some of the things that are uh, changing these parameters will do. So let's go back to linear because that seemed to be working for us. And now let's actually just tweak something called C. Now C is actually going to be that soft margin that I was talking about before. So it defaults to one, allowing somewhat of a soft margin. But if we wanted to increase that, we could do something like C equals two. Okay. Um, and this is double the amount of points that are going to be allowed in that margin than before. If you wanted a hard margin, you would do C equals zero. So let's do C equals one and see what we're getting. And you can see now we're getting 94.7. Uh, now, obviously, this is all going to vary depending on uh, what our data is split up into. Oh, wait, is there a reason that C is 1? I thought I made that 2. Anyways, let's try this again. Uh, 96.4, right? So essentially, you'd probably want to go through and train this and keep tweaking these parameters and maybe train it on the same uh, training data constantly rather than splitting it up like this, like just do like a hard split um, by, you could do something like this, like data up to 100 is your test data and past that is your training data so that you can really see what these parameters are actually doing for you but obviously we know that linear is making a massive difference adding that kernel in so uh actually i gotta get rid of those square brackets so essentially that's really all there is to using this svm now i want to compare using k nearest neighbors classifier what the main difference is and if we're going to get a better value from k nearest neighbors now I'd ask you guys um, to make your own prediction. Do you think that using K nearest neighbors is going to make a difference? So let's do use this and we can set, uh, what do you call it? N neighbors equal to something like nine. We do have quite a few points, so that should be okay. Um, and let's try this now. Okay, uh, so 94, seven. Let me just make sure this is actually running the right script because yeah, so working file. Okay, so we are right, running the correct script here. Okay, so the only reason I was doing that is just because it got like the exact same amount as the SVM, which was kind of surprising to me. But let's see if we decrease the neighbors, what we're getting, uh, 91. So I think with the increase in neighbors, you kind of get a, uh, what do you call it, a better sense here. So 93.8. Now, this is surprising because typically K nearest neighbors does not work as well with uh, huge dimensions. And we do have like 30 or something features for this data set. But here, that's a perfect example of why we have to test out different machine learning algorithms. I would still say SVM is probably our best bet um, to use right now, just in terms of, you know, its accuracy by only adding that linear kernel. Here, we kind of have to mess around with the different amount of neighbors. And I can imagine that we're going to get quite a bit of variance as based on our different uh, training and testing data. So um, that's really all I can say about that. So essentially, now we have learned uh, linear regression, we've learned k-nearest neighbors, and we've learned SVM, the three kind of fundamental algorithms. And now we can go into k-means, our first unsupervised learning algorithm, which is kind of exciting because we're no longer going to need to do this kind of stuff. We're going to give it training data, but we're not going to tell it what the training data is. for Because right now, essentially, we're saying, okay, so this, this data point is equal to a malignant tumor, right? And I realize I didn't even end up using this list, but anyways, or a benign tumor. We're not going to tell our, tra our, uh, our model that next time. We're going to say, you have to figure out what makes a class this and what makes a class this and why and that's kind of cool and that's the cool kind of machine learning stuff and that's what we're gonna be doing with neural networks as well so i hope you guys are excited about that uh with that being said that's it for the video if you guys want the text-based tutorial and the, the previous and the rest of them go to my website techwithtim.net um, and i'll see you guys in another video